imagine it's February 14th, 1929, and you and six other men are working for Irish gangster George Bugs Moran. And in walks police officers, and they line you up against the wall, facing the wall. Your backs are to the police officers, and they open fire, firing over 70 rounds of ammunition. This is what has been deemed the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, and it, it occurred in Chicago, Illinois. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. This is episode six of season two, Files on Ice. I'm your host, Delilah. George ran his bootlegging uh, business out of a garage in Chicago, Illinois. It was at 2122 North Clark Street. And on this particular day, February 14th, 1929, uh, George's men are in there working and what they thought were policemen came in, lined them up and killed them. Turns out they were gangsters from a rival uh, gang dressed up as police officers. Now, this case has never been solved. They don't know who did it. There was one gentleman who was still alive when the police showed up. His name was Frank Gusenberg. And the police pressed him for information, but he was not willing to talk at all. He didn't say he didn't give up any names or anything like that before he passed. George suspected that it was Al Capone who had hired the hit on his men. And actually in a statement, um, George said that only Capone kills like that. However, when talking to Capone, who was actually in Florida at the time that this happened, Capone said the only man who kills like that is Bugs Moran. So, I mean, they're both blaming each other. And actually, Bugs was on his way to the garage when this happened, but he missed it just by minutes or else, I mean, he probably would have been shot as well. He probably would not have made it. Now, in the 1920s, um, Chicago was known for their uh, mob mafia connections. And Al Capone at this time was trying to become like the primary uh, person with bootlegging and prostitution and gambling. And like I said, at the time that this happened, Capone was in his house in Florida. But come on, we all know that you don't have to be somewhere to have ordered something to happen to somebody. But maybe, I don't, I was reading it and I kind of, I don't know why this would make sense, but I kind of wondered if. I don't know, is it possible that Bugs ordered the hit on his own men to make it look like Capone did it, to try to get Capone, like, put in jail? Maybe? I don't know. Um, because Bugs was trying to get control of this area as well. In this case, this actually marks one of the earliest um, times that ballistics was used in evidence in United States history. Colonel Calvin Goddard he was able to identify the two guns that were used in the massacre um, because he matched the bullets. Now, I find that pretty interesting because this is kind of like the beginning of where ballistic evidence started. It's unfortunate the way that it had to happen, but it is pretty cool that something like that this tragedy would bring about something like ballistic evidence that we still use today. And like I said, nobody was ever charged for these murders. No one was ever put in jail for these murders. All the leads just ran cold. So if you or anyone you know has heard stories about this or maybe know someone who has told you some information about this and you feel it necessary to tell anybody, please contact the local authorities and let's see if we can close the case on the St. Valentine's Day Massacre.